it's ready to rock and roll. And I want to see something different come out of the uh, the Outlaws this time around. Well, they need something because this is, well, potentially their last chance because if they lose this one, that's the BO3 done. And then we're going to be getting through into the next game, which be Crimson versus Aztec. But hold the phone on that one. We've got to wait our way through this one first. Potentially the third game, but it'll be up to Outlaws. They really need to level themselves up here, Skimmy, because Nomi, like we said, definitely outclass them. Blaze and Maev going to be the first two bands yet again. So almost identical thing, well, exactly identical to start things off. That's it indeed. Blaze and Maeve. I mean, these are the two newest heroes. I mean, let's discuss why are they so strong? Blaze for the sole reason that he has a lot of stickiness. Shuts He's down everything. I mean, he shuts down so many compositions which are all in because the oil spit goes down. You can't do much. You try and force a fight. You try and do a wombo combo. Drops the bunker. So cantankerous diverse. It's frustrating as Hello. flip that to the side of Maeve. What can she do? Jumps. She's invulnerable. <laughs> she locks you in place. She binds you back forwards. And if you clumped up like we saw in the game before. You know, that fan of knife has zero cooldown and single-handedly she can win the game herself. She definitely can, and that's why she is our key no may have so far. And again, Skimmy, exactly the same. Malfurion gonna be locked in for Nomia on red. So definitely not giving anything away, but Sky Temple, again, Dahaka comes to mind. The global presence, but Greymane and ETC this time outlaw saying we're gonna secure that power for ourselves. Yeah, I like this. So the Malfurion, once again, it means they can just draft into any kind of direction. They realize that, hey, Greyman is still very flavor of the month. If we have Malfurion, wow. Greyman can't really do too much. We can shut him down quite a bit. The Malfurion is a really cool pick. Obviously, it was banned away last time, but we'll find so much value this time around. And the Garrosh. Well, the Garrosh is so interesting to me because he's been taken out of the meta by a lot of members, actually, in the community, saying that he's so weak now that his uh, pool doesn't actually bring you in. But a lot of people also just deciding, hey, this actually is still kind of strong. Let's not completely dismiss this. So I'm excited to see um, what Penta can do with it. Mm, I mean, Garrosh, that Wrecking Ball can definitely cause you all kinds of trouble. I mean, there was question marks over that nerf that you were talking about. You know, now that Groundbreaker doesn't pull in, is he still viable? Well, the answer is yes. He is definitely a thorn in a lot of team sides. It's just how you got to play around him. At the moment, the Malfield pick complements that one very, very well. Like you said earlier on in game number one, Skimmy, the last rights now is becoming a lot more predominant. You can flick someone high health like ETC into your team so you can bait out the mosh pit with a little bit of an interrupt which garrosh can do hey there you go that's the control that so nomi are already they know what outlaws are trying to do give them a taste of their own medicine but they're experienced enough to deal with it i mean of old the etc garrosh has always been a very classic matchup a very skill oriented matchup as well do you flip or do you slide because if you slide too early he flips you into the rest of his team if yep. you try and grab him too early then he has a free power slide right so it's a bit of mental warfare between those two to really understand and if he does get the flick well look at the amount of follow-up damage that nomia will have bands that come across obviously Li Ming doing a lot of work last time around and we discussed it before Li Ming against etc not a good time for two reasons the poke as well as the wave of force meaning that he's forced to go stage dive when he might not want to whereas the oof are really promoting the idea of hey outlaws we know what you tried to do last game you tried to go for a very wombo combo centric style of play with what we've drafted so far in terms of um, splitting members apart with the Garrosh, going for the last rights for that execution, Ufa would interrupt that. And if you go for a Terriel, well, you're just going to get bodied in lane. Mm -hmm. Do you think they might potentially go for some sort of an Oriel for the Crystal Ages just to neutralize that Malthia last rights? They might need to answer that one. But hey, Outlaws, like we said, they are smart gamers. They know how to answer. It'll just be build the pressure, get to them. The Harker, like we said, blow the pressure on a map like Sky Temple. It's a big map. So those globals, especially the Brush Stalker, gank potential, zone potential, and capturing the shrine potential. I like the pick. Tychus, great compliment as well to chew through that Garrosh. Mm, yeah, I like the Dahaka as well because it gives them that globe that they much desperately need uh, to try and mirror really what Nomi have brought to the table. Uh, for the majority of their team's existence, they've always been known as that uh, rotation heavy style and uh, execution when it comes to the team fight as well. So they deny a few crucial picks. The Tychus should find some great value against the likes of a Malfiel and Garrosh if he can be left to his own devices. The only question now springing to my mind is what support do they go do they go for the Rhaegar for the ancestral which is such a big uh, nuisance to try and deal with and can stabilize members that are going to get dropped down by the mouthfeel or do they go for the likes of a lucio to make sure that they can disengage and uh, drop the beat so to speak when they so need mobility definitely would be a good thing definitely would be a good thing but we're just leaving us waiting in the winds at the moment they're going to run down that time of the whole way Falstad is a great answer to the dahaka 
not only does that you know make him think about the brush store for a little bit more he can stay up in the lane and get the exact same soak so this is nomia just flexing their muscles their experience right here in the draft uh -huh. and hanzo again that poke potential is phenomenal will he go for the scatter arrow build i mean fat 94 is is known for playing his hanzo a fair bit recently if you've been joining his stream a bit he loves it i mean it depends really on a map like this you could potentially decide to go for that but i mean a lot of these heroes can uh, deal with the camps in, in, in quite a quick fashion anyway. I'm just trying to wonder, I mean, this is the second time we've seen Hanzo in this series, picked in that last spot. Both these teams really not uh, really not too concerned about the likes of the Genji and the Hanzo. All eyes are now on both Maeve and Blaze, the newest heroes that have joined the Nexus. So Genji wouldn't fit here, obviously. They need to have a support. It's where they go with this one. But I like the file. So this is a, a classic Nomia pick. This is a pick that is always... I mean, I, I want to say won them tournaments because for the most part it has. A lot of teams go very aggressive all in style of play. One good gust and it's all over. Oh, this is my there it is. Jam. Lucio, you caught it. Is going to round out the lineup for Outlaws, but the gusts, I'm going to be watching those ones. But I mean, Hinterland Blast has found a lot of value. There's a lot of damage potential. I mean, think about it. The Outlaws can just line up. Faustner just has to sit back, wait for ETC to drop the Mosh Pit, and either one of those ultimates, yes, Gust can blow him out of it, but. If the teams are stacking up to deal with the damage, Hinterland Blast can just absolutely shred them. But only time will tell, ladies and gentlemen. It is game number two of this best of three series between Outlaws and Nomia. We've had Battlefield of Eternity. We're now going over to the Sky Temple. So once again on Team Blue, it is Outlaws. Lahal is playing Tychus. Gondo is playing Dahaka. Coffee on Main. Hiccup is playing Lucio. And IBW is on ETC. Good old ice bold water. Trusting him, he probably will go stage dive. I've never seen this guy ever go for the mosh, but we'll have to wait and see. On the other side, it is Nomia. Currently with a 1 0 lead. It is John, actually, Fat94 in his own impersonation. He is on Fausta, team captain. The real John is on Hanzo. Vanilla playing Malfurion. Penta unleash on that Garrosh. And Ryu rounds out this composition by playing the newly reworked Malfiel. Such different compositions. All going to come down to execution. Easy to say, harder to execute. And that is a double rhyme. Well, everything works in theory, Skimmy. Even your memes. Even your memes, son. So, who do you think is going to take this one? We saw Nomia do a fantastic job on the first map. And I mean, Outlaws, like we said, great team. But Nomia, again, they're S class. They are indeed. And they've gone for a pet comp, right? You know, they're looking yeah. to try and take somebody down. Yes, you got your poke with your Hanzo um, to. I suppose deal like a Lee Ming Five, as we saw last game, four, but they've got the ability to, you know, three, grab somebody, two, lock them in place, one. blow them up. Flip side of that is once again, Go Outlaws five, have gone for a slightly two, varied version of what they played in Battle for the Paternity, but at the end of the day, mm -hmm. still much the same. They look for picks, they need to get kills early. If they don't, they'll fall behind. I mean, I don't expect to see a game be finished in 10 minutes on this map, but no. uh, it sets the tone regardless. The Grey Bane is definitely a comfort pick for the Outlaws guys. They're going to actually make the call here to bum rush the bottom tower. Early experience lead is pivotal, so they're going to take that advantage. One tower going to go down. No! Oh, I was going to say, the cocktail coming in clutch there at the end. But it was almost disastrous. Skinny, but it's going to be Gondo and John. Is that the Fat 94 John or John John up there on the top lane? I think it's John John on the foul stat up there. Um, I mentioned it before, but now I'm confused because I can't see the levels, and that is what's going to throw me off on this one. I believe it is actually John John on the foul set. Yeah. Because I believe we see him play a ton of Hanzo. This is what's confusing about this one, but this is what makes it exciting for all new viewers at home. Looking at the talents, <laughs> nothing too out of the ordinary. Obviously, um, Perfect Dame has been picked up, so this is the slightly dairy version of the cocktail now. We have to wait and see if this does find the value. And in its new form, because for the most part, many people have been opting to go for that uh, auto attack style now. They have, because the cocktail, like you said earlier on, it's had uh, a few tweaks here and there, but I've always had my eyes on the uh, on the Walking Girl for Grey Man for quite some time, and Dreams have sort of been answered a little bit now that it's come back, uh, well, not come back, has for the first time, I dare say, been pushed into the meta. It was always been cocktails for as long as I can remember. But regardless, it's great to see him getting in here and getting his claws dirty. Now, John and Gondo still duking it out up in the top lane. The EXP lead is currently in favor of Outlaws, so that call to rush the bottom tower scheme has so far gone in their favor, but that's because there's been no picks, and all it takes is for Nomia, like we said, give an inch, and they will take an absolute country mile. This is what Outlaws are trying to do, is they're trying to uh, set themselves up for that second rotation of Shrines, right? 
when they spawn the bottom side, the temple is active, they're ready to rock and roll. And you can see the top lane, it is going to be that juking of who has the better understanding of when to use their globals. Gondo, really famous for playing his Dahaku. He's grinded a lot of games with this hero. At one stage, I believe it was like fifth GM on the ladder. And uh, many people are saying this guy is somebody to watch. Now he's definitely putting that to uh, putting the, the the proof in the pudding, for lack of a better expression. He's definitely going to try and show us what he can do when it comes to macro and say that, hey, Outlaws aren't a one trick, all in aggressive play. Uh, kind of like what we saw Darkseid last season. Well, if they can hit level seven here, they'll have the wind over Nomia, and they're looking to do that earlier on. But Nomia, like we said, if there's one thing we know about them is that they are never down and out. I mean, no EXP lead is too great. No mountain is too high for them to climb. They can claw it back, and they're doing so ever so slightly. But like we said, Outlaws will just hit level 7 before them, should they keep this up. Now they're trying to get this bottom second tower, and that yeah. just might put them over the edge, I believe. The only one there is John John on the Faust, that he's going to be able to do absolutely nothing. But that opens up these two towers here, uh, sorry, these two shrines at the moment, Skimmy, and Nomi are going to take a comfortable control for now. So for the most part, you want to try and get the final shots on these uh, temples because they're the ones that give you the XP. But I mean, I can yeah. see the, the logic behind what they're doing so far, right? It is, as I said before, trying to set up for that later stage um, of the temple. Ideally, they would have liked to have kept those towers and the well. Then it means you absolutely crush the bottom lane. They're going to have to deal with that as a result. They do fall slightly behind an XP only because of the shots that were fired in the other lanes. But uh, for the most part, you can see that they've got a plan and they're looking to try and execute. So in go Nomia. Now they gave Outlaws a little bit of room there, just on the bottom shrine, but hey, they've got the top one. That'll allow Panther to rotate down and join the fight. Meanwhile, oh, Gondo imagine. and John on Felstad still duking it out, but the tower game is going to go down, and like we said, Nomia clawing back that EXP ever so slightly. The tower tiers are on even Stevens at the moment. Without the soldier actually being picked up here by Tiger, so he wants that survivability, getting that extra 25% armor. So not a bad choice considering Tychus is very, very squishy. His downfall is his mobility, so Lucio will complement that, and that level 7 talent will do that even more. Having a look at the Hanzo build, it is redemption. Oh, the oh, Burrow comes out of the and Gondo managing to survive this time. It's amazing, I dare say. Was he playing Arthur? See, he may have fallen, but Mr. Harker is switched on enough. He's still with the XP advantage around this Oh gee, this is, uh, this is the hero to watch when it comes to Gondo. De Barre was perfectly timed, otherwise Penta would have found the kill, opened up the scoreboard, and made this one a much quicker game than it already has been. Five minutes since this one, Kit Fox. We are without a kill, but that might all be about to change as the contest comes across onto the point. John, the one being focused for the meantime, as Ice Cold slides on in, looking for the opportunity. Penta oh. stuck between a rock and a half, but he has armor. He does just not die. John getting flicked into the aggression. Too, too, too easily. And how about a triple kill for good measure? I said we need some kills. Let's get a quad kill. No me say, what's up? We're ready to play. Definitely supersizing that kill streak there. And that is going to be a very early boss. Five minutes and 13 seconds was the initial engage. There is only poor old coffee who is just sitting there at the moment. No sugar, no milk. And just at the bottom of the plunger. There's nothing he can do as he just watches on as Nomi are going to secure this boss and skinny. This is where they are extremely nasty with their gameplay. They're not going to push with it. They're going to sit back, soak up level 10, let that Falstad do the work, utilize the global as they need necessary, control the map, and just give us the old vintage Nomia doing Nomia things. And there's no reason to push with this boss. You can see how squishy it is. It's like, you know, when you push in with the sappers um, on Tales of Doom, at the start of the game, they do little to nothing, right? It's just there to be used as a deterrence. This is keeping Outlaws distracted from actually taking these shots from the bottom from that temple. Allows Nomi to rotate, they pick up their own giants, they've got their mouth deal and picking up knights. They're controlling the map, they're giving pressure all across, and it's progressively giving them a style of play of like, we make two moves whilst you only make one, and progressively as the game goes on, you just can't deal with it. They need level 10, that's the pressure you're talking about. And Outlaws, they're still just under half a level away, they need to get their soak on, they're doing that. Gondo up top. Lahal in the mid there on the Tychus, but this tower control is just all going Nomia's way. Vanilla and John controlling the lanes. Pedro just sitting down on the bot, just going to just wait out the tower. It doesn't really matter if you kill them or not. There it is, the fort goes down. That make that two for two because Nomia looking to flex these muscles. Gondo looking for a cheeky engage up there. On to John, needs to be careful. Lightning Rod doing a lot of damage. Tower goes boom, fort goes crash. And very, very shortly, I think Nomia will be looking to yeah. go for that win. All it needs is one team fighting a snowball. Oh. They're going to try and fight a monitor, and it's good. And it allows Vanilla to run away from things. Last right comes across, and sweet dreams to him. 
John says it's time to fight, baby, and he makes sure that Gus goes across. Gondo split from the team. Knights, meanwhile, still pushing top, so if they can delay this one for as long as possible, they find so much value. The Odin trying to flick Mukes from downtown, but it's not going to be enough. And just look how quickly that fight broke out. Two kills mm -hmm. just like that. The point I wanted to bring up before, though, Kit Fox, is looking at uh, Coffee's build. He's really changed what was brought to the table last game. He's gone for the Wizard Jawless at level 7, which in its new version is a lot more forgiving and a lot easier to stack mm. on up. But generally speaking, this is a talent that you need when you've got a support designated to try and to protect you. Calusio, obviously we know it's progressive, slow healing. He has mobility, but if he gets jumped upon, kind of like the redemption on the Hanzo at level 1, it's just not going to find value. Could this be the rebirth of the double support meta scheme? You might be seeing Tassadar, the enabler, coming back just to give Greymane that little bit of extra value. One, well, some might say we can only hope. The others might say, please God, no. But we'll leave that up to the chat to decide as the hush falls across this map. Level 13 being hit by Nomia. They're going to lock in their talents. Mouth going for Ice Block. No real surprise there. Foulstat's going to lock in the giant killer. So expect him to be taking massive, massive chunks off his Outlaws opponents. The Tower Games is on again. In 30 seconds, they'll spawn Coffee and the rest of Outlaws. That's a little bit of a consolation prize. They are going to take their Knights. They'll get Marginal in the top lane, but get almost no value as Nomia are there. Ask Bob Water goes into the engage. Fantastic play there from Liu to get away. And even better, Gust Arrow combination coming out. Looking for no. And the goes in. Oh, as no. the Barrow gets destroyed. He gets absolutely destroyed. He bought so much time for his team to come across, but not enough because they were all gusted away. So, so slow. The Mush is there. And the Odin to follow things up. Is this the opening of this one? Two for one. This is good. This is enough kills. Slightly get themselves back into the storm. Looking for level 13. Looking for a third. They find it. Fat94 falls to the ground, and that could not come at a better time. With two temples spawning, they get themselves comfortably back into this game. Now, when you go, Skimmy, that comeback train is a roll in level 13. Now, they did that at a talent tier disadvantage as well. It's yep. just going to be locked in now. That will put the wind back in your sails if ever I've seen it, Skimmy. But John, actual John John this time going down the bottom there on the Falstaff, he's going to play the long game, going to take that tower. Nomia will get, uh, sorry, Outlaws will get their first tower of the game in the top lane. They're going to control mid tower and potentially get their second, but Nomia will just be happy to play the environmental PvE style game here. They're in front on towers at the moment, and all they need to do is just keep taking the objectives. They're actually going to make the call to bail now, because John doesn't know where Outlaws are. The rotation comes across, Penta takes over, tag team play. You can almost see the confidence from Nomia saying, look, we can afford to give away a temple. We don't need to panic. We are still ahead in this game. They can have that. We've not taken any real structural damage. So for sure, let them take that one. They're looking to try and minimize the losses taken, obviously. Get John out of the harm's way. Oh, there's the flick straight away. Looking to try and take it. Tool and oh! Last oh, night, he borrowed the sound barrier. Everything coming together. Is it enough, though, Kipfog? No, it's not because Redemption is waiting in the winds. And Hanzo, with that ridiculously long attack range, is going to find the kills. He gets tick up as well so Dahaka and Lucio are out of this equation Coffee is gonna fall as well Twilight Dream comes across from Vanilla and Laha will fall and it's just one two three four let the bodies hit the floor and Outlaws <laughs> they have got four man deficit another boss is gonna go in favor of Nomia and like I said to me the environmental game is all it needs they're in front on levels now it looked a little bit shaky for them outlaw uh in that top lane when outlaws came back with a very very strong engage but nomia like we said they're able to collect themselves they do not let anything rattle them and that is what separates them apart from every other team in the region at the moment and it does care fox and that was a good little catchphrase there uh, i'm not sure i've heard that before from i mean it, it, it sounded there uh, it sounded pretty fresh to me <laughs> mate the 90s called and they want their meme back <laughs> The boss is here though, however, and this time it's not a 4 minute boss, it is a 11 minute boss. The keep will be taking some damage, it is definitely without a doubt going to fall. The Odin having to be forced as a defensive measure, and you can just see the weakness of the EPC. This is that skill matchup, if you're close, you're gonna get flipped, and you're gonna go down. And just like that, speak of it, and 2 fall down. Gust is there, the core is in sight, and Nomi are looking for the clean 2-0 to open up their 2018 Premier League campaign. Looking very strong, looking very good, and looking very promising here for Nomia. They're going to comfortably secure them in here. Gondo and Hiccup, they're like flies on the wall here as they watch the core fall. The GG's come across, Skimmy, but Outlaws just being outclassed on the day. But what a match to start things off here for the ANZ HGC Premier Division.
was there and it really was and i mean that's that's the nomia we've come to know and love that is the nomia brand that they really put out there for the whole of 2017 just losing in that final hurdle leading into uh, blizzcon of course so see them before you've been running their their feet again and not being deterred have a lot of experience they've been around together for such a long time and that cannot be underestimated the calm collective style of play there when hey we did die to um outlaws sure they did give us a little bit of an opportunity to come out but it's not the end of the world it really isn't we get we get the boss we finish the game and uh yeah speaks to itself really doesn't it <laughs> it's funny it's not the end of the world it's definitely not for outlaws i mean that's them for the week done but hey skim oh sorry that's them for the night done but hey skimmy there's nine more weeks of ANZ Premier yes. Division. This is only week number one. So if you like that, well, buckle up, Sunshine, because there's a lot more coming your way. So what we're going to do here, ladies and gentlemen, is we're going to wrap up the first game. We're going to go to a very short break here while we collect ourselves. Hopefully you do too. Shout out to everybody watching out there in That's Twitch. There is a lot there. And this is, I think, the most we've ever had. We've hit 1,700 viewers. Thank you so much for making this a special occasion. We're going to take that short break, and we'll be back with game number two on the other side, which is Crimson versus Aztec Entertainment. 